well welcome back to another video and um, if you wondered why we started with a little bit of music on this video um, that uh, little bit of intro music there means an awful lot to me because um, if you're a certain age you'll remember that well and, and you like gardening that is because um, from 1969 to certainly the late 1980s that was the intro music for the BBC Two uh, programme Gardener's World. Uh, as a teenager, um, perhaps, I was, perhaps I was a bit of a strange teenager, but um, I adored gardening. Um, my grandfather was a professional gardener. He was a market gardener and um, had done a gardening apprenticeship in his younger days with his father. And um, so, you know, right from the age of two, I was brought up to gardening and um, absolutely loved it and still do. And um, so obviously with the intro of colour television in the late 1960s, the BBC saw a fantastic market there, you know, to make a programme uh, about gardening because obviously colour brought a whole new world to the, to the gardening television uh, idea. And um, Gardener's World, as it does still to this day, I don't watch it anymore, I have to say. Um, um, you know, I, I, I've moved on and I know a lot of younger people and older people still like the presenter today, but to me it's not the same programme that it was when I was growing up. And um, that's just very much my view. And um, I grew up in the age of um, Percy Thrower uh, presenting and um, then Peter Seabrook, and then the late, great Jeff Hamilton, um, who was one of the longest serving presenters on Gardener's World. Um, and it seemed a different programme then to me, you know, it seemed, a, um, and um, as I stand here in my um, Alton greenhouse, this takes me right back to the 1970s, when Gardener's World often used to come from a location called Clacks Farm in Worcestershire, which was the garden of a, of a great gardener, in my view, um, called Arthur Billet, who used to co-host the programme, first of all with Percy Thrower and then Peter Seabrook. And um, obviously, in those days, the BBC, anybody presenting on programmes, couldn't promote any of uh, things they liked. They had to be very careful. But you could see Arthur Billet really liked these green, these Alton cedarwood greenhouses. So of course, having seen them on the programme, I had to have one. And um, this greenhouse here has stood the test of time. It's been here 45 years now. And, um, and I've been delighted with it. And that's, you know, 45 growing season. It cost in 19, whenever it was, <laughs> 70 something, it, cr it, cross it cost the princely sum of £148 uh, to buy new. Um, this is eight and eight, just a small eight by eight greenhouse. Um, give me great pleasure over the years to, to a try and grow things in here. Um, I'm a great fan of um, annual bedding plants, you know, marigolds, dahlias, rebecchias, cosmos, uh, lobelia, and that kind of thing. You know, I was brought up uh, there again, that was very the, the norm of gardening in the 1960s and 70s um, to have colourful annuals. And so I still like to sort of try and grow a few of those myself. So there we go. We're, we're now looking at what I've got coming up there. And um, these are just things like um, there in, in the front there, in the in the, the two trays in the foreground which have been pricked out. They're little bedding dahlias. And then there's some very thick lobelia. That, 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 that's that little blue flower that has come up like cress. And um, I think beyond those are asters. And then there's some marigolds. And, um, and then some rebecchias coming up there. And um, it's very basic as that annual seeds, which I like to grow. Um, I've got a few over here, which are getting a little bit bigger. Um, and the very battered looking um, Osteospermums and Begonias uh, came as plug plants, were delivered from a well-known uh, online firm. And sadly, 
they had all tipped out in transit in the box and got really badly damaged. In fairness to the company, they have refunded. When I sent them pictures of what had happened, um, if we turn around, um, you'll see the begonia has got really badly damaged. I mean, it was touch and go whether I um, um, potted them up even, uh, but uh, they've been in there two or three weeks now and they, they are gradually recovering a little bit. Um, and um, then there's some marigolds and some, uh, say, some bedding dailies that I'm in the process of um, pricking out. And on the floor there, we have got some antirhinums that I've just pricked out as well, and the rest of the begonias that got damaged. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you can do with a small greenhouse, even if it's not heated, because it's not too late even now to sow some annual bedding plants. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need heat. I would um, say that you might want some horticultural fleece to cover them over at night on these cold nights. I mean, I have, I've put in back into service on my main channel. Uh, I did a, a couple of little videos of me restoring my old uh, Aladdin greenhouse heater, which um, is 30 years old now. And um, I've revamped that up and got that back working. And so there's been so many cold nights um, this year in April. In fact, I read online the other day, um, we've had more frosts in April than we have um, for many, many years. And in fact, I think it's, a, it's nearly a record uh, in the UK. Um, I think 1939 was a very similar year. I wasn't, I know I'm old, but I, I wasn't around in 1939. But that was another very cold April with many, many night frosts. And here, virtually every night, um, I've just had to have a little bit of heat on, um, particularly when you're starting seeds off, when you, you know, when they're just, you know, when you've set them first and they're germinating. But now I could very nearly get away with just, if it's going to be a cold night, covering the, this, the plants over with some, um, I'm sure you all know, horticultural fleece down there. There's some my fleece I've got bundled up there. So it's not too late. It's very easy. Things like marigold and... Um, all, all the you know um, very to, easy to grow um, bedding plants you know you can sow them right on into May and okay they'll be a little bit later um, getting going but they'll, they'll still give you a, a really good show and very easy if you've got um, even a little polythene greenhouse it's amazing what you can grow so um, you know I've been hooked on gardening for many years and um, and I still you know, think it's a wondrous thing to um, set a packet of seeds and watch them come up and nurture them. And sometimes you have great success and sometimes you don't. And, you know, then watch them grow on and, and set them out and, you know, come into flower and, and give you many months of colour, um, all from a, a very small packet of seeds. So, um, and as I say, it, um, so there we go. Thanks as always for watching. Um, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Um, we were coming back and having a look at various points in time at the greenhouse and the plants here, um, how they develop onwards. And um, thank you again and um, see you very soon. And please do subscribe and like. Bye for now.